all right fam so welcome back to the Rains african experiences and today our experience is the continuation of our one bedroom self-contained house all right by one bedroom house i mean a living room and then a bedroom a bathroom and a kitchen or a store depending on what you prefer so our main focus is going to be that house today and we are going to learn everything we need to know about the cost of plastering it and closing it now when i say closing the house i mean putting in doors and windows all right and oftentimes that includes burglar proof in the house as well so i'll be breaking down for you what you need how much it costs and then i'll total up and give you a full total of everything you need all right so today we are plastering and closing this house. All right. All right. So I hope you enjoy the, the video. Of African experiences. Uh, this video is specifically about the cost of plastering and closing our house, the particular house we've been working on in the previous videos. So you'll be seeing me showing you a different house. I mean, even this too, but I just thought I would change the scenery a little bit. All right, the houses I was supposed to document, but uh, because of the distance, I figured mm, I won't go that far. But still, I just thought I would, you know, inch them into the video just to make it a little bit more interesting. But still, you know, the calculations will be for this particular house. And uh, when it comes back to closing, we'll return to our beautiful house and focus on that. All right, I'll be showing you a few things and how to actually avoid facing the same problems the owner of this house is facing. You see that paint, the water rising and all that? I have a solution for that. So stay, stay with me in the video and let's all learn these together. are plastered right. buildings. But we are going to discuss extensively about the cost of plastering, you know? so much work going into by the way this country is developing and at a very very fast rate ah ha. let's go to our small houses and start discussing the cost of plastering all right plastering we, are, we shall reach these buildings too i'll teach you how how much you need to build something like this how much you need to plaster something like this how long the job would take everything by the way stick stick with me and you're going to learn so much all right let's proceed to our plastering video yeah all right farm so we're about to start talking about the requirements prices of everything you need to fully plaster and close your house if it is a one bedroom house the meters or the measurements we are using is 4.30 meters wide and 9.60 meters long that's the house we started with and that's the house we are going to stick with uh the reason i'm shooting from this house is simple a little bit of flavor to the video really but there is nothing much to it the information applies to our house that we've been working upon all right all right so i know the people who built this friends of mine but um well they're not here maybe they'll come because the next stage to this in two weeks time is going to be fitting in the doors burglars and windows this is a these are rentals they are also one bedroom one living room self-contained all right but the difference is that these people put their store outside so they don't have an inside kitchen as you all see but our house that we are working on has an inside chicken there are many ways to skin a cat is it a cat what is that saying so this house is fully plastered and i'll be telling you how much you need to plaster a house all right our house so first of all you need four elf trucks of sand plaster sand i know some people will be telling you 
you can use this type of sand, this type of sand. But for me, I'm telling you, you need plaster, sand to plaster. It's even in the word itself. All right? The ceiling has been fully plastered, but for me, I don't agree with their decision to put the exit hole there. Anyway, they closed it. So that's good. All right. So I'm going to break down prices for you, but first I give you a small tour while I talk to you. Uh, when you enter here, all these houses, the whole face is like that. This is their store, as you can see, it's on the outside. And this is the living room. Then you go to the bedroom, and then you go to the bathroom and toilet. Now, the house we are using is bigger than this house, all right? So which means it's cheaper to build this house than to build the house we've been working on, all right? I don't know if we are following. So that is the kitchen, oh, sorry, bathroom, toilet. In my opinion, this is very small for a bathroom and toilet, but still, I don't, I didn't design the plan for this house, so everyone has their own plan, okay? So now, let's get to it. You need four elf trucks of plaster sand. You need um, 32 bags of cement. Remember, because our house is big, that's why you need that much cement. But for this house, you probably need 28 bags. I've seen the measurements. I think you need at most 25 to 28 bags to plaster fully both inside and outside all right for that house there and the other one these two on the other hand are slightly bigger i don't know why the rooms are bigger i think it's because of the type of um the type of land all right anyway let's get to it now you need 32 bags of cement to do this job number one number two you need, because of the roofing, you need 32 bags of cement. This is what we call a hip roof. Temuli pini on the sides. Eh? There are no sides. In the, in the, there are no bricks on the sides. You've seen that type of roofing. Now, you need 32 bags of that, of cement. But if your house has pins on the sides, eh? it's a, on, an open gable type of roofing then you need 35 bags of cement so i'm going to focus on the 32 bags for now all right now remember for if you're going to plaster for every bag of cement you buy one uh one tiny bag of um waterproof waterproof it's that element you add to the mix to prevent your house from having water rising yeah? you've seen those houses and then i'll be explaining to you the solution is done in, in the process of plastering remember the plastering process is one inch thick but it's supposed to be one inch thick and my measurements are going for at most four four wheelbarrows to one bag of cement that means in one bag of cement you put four wheelbarrows of plaster sand but the standard measures is three but you can put you can do four it's okay it will be fine okay and the prices i'm giving you are for same same two same two same two cement and everything i'm giving you is current prices so waterproof is five thousand shillings all right so you get your 32 bags and you multiply by five thousand you get 160 thousand as for cement you get your 32 bags of cement you multiply by 33 thousand shillings and you get one million and fifty six thousand shillings an elf truck of sand for plaster is 120 thousand shillings maximum so you get 120 thousand shillings and multiply by four you get 480 thousand shillings you need some eucalyptus poles at most you shouldn't buy more than six why because on site you already have some eucalyptus falls and you can use those yeah you can use those same ones to do what hey you keep your material actually look at this one you know an ability this is ability probably a remainder from the roughing process but they're supposed to protect this keep it somewhere put it inside the house the way you saw them keeping the ladder in the bedroom all right in the future you're going to need all these things kumanga this person is still painting when you're painting, you really don't need ladders. Atinegu no muliangochi, molala. Oba montegeira. So, 
going forward you need uh for you need to put aside money for transportation uh of material to site and then you also need to put aside money for to transport your workers all together you put aside 200,000 shillings zibazimala to transport your material on site to transport your workers on site 200,000 shillings if you can now remember you have to micromanage your money remember the the chapter is plastering and closing your house now in the process of plastering and closing your house we are going to i'm going to show you something these people have not yet plastered inside they've plastered outside but before you plaster inside your house first put the doors or what you call door frames in, in ZG. If the wooden, for the wooden doors, put them in, the door frames, all right? And then for the, for the metallic doors, also put them in, but don't put the glasses yet. Why? Because when they are plastering, Bagenda Kumenya, before when they are installing doors eh, into the walls, they break side by side to install the pins, the door pins. Now, imagine you've already done your plastering job and someone has to come and knock through that work. It's going to cost you more money. It's going to cost you more money. You have to repeat the plastering jobs all over from the windows to the doors. Now, let's proceed. Now, labor for the job, plastering is a contract job. You shouldn't pay more than 400,000 shillings to plaster something like this. We are talking about one living room, one bedroom. You shouldn't put both inside and outside. You shouldn't pay more than 400,000 shillings. So that's why I put it as maximum. Put aside 100,000 shillings for emergencies. You might find that you need an extra bag of cement here and there. You need this, you need that. So put aside 100,000 shillings for that. Then food, water for your workers. Maybe now, when it comes to feeding, 50,000 shillings is enough. Put it aside. Remember when I told you transportation for both your material and for your laborers. Kati, <clears throat> if you're not transporting them and you're housing them, eh? remember, the money is still enough. This job, at most, Omani, when the job is a contract job, always give people half the money before the, before the job and give them balance. After the job, don't give people all the money. They will relax. They want to do your job. So if it's a contract-based job, half the time, they don't even ask you to feed them or house them. They'll simply say the money includes everything. That's why they need that deposit before the job. All right. Now, when I'm doing the closing part, I'll not do it from here. I'm going to do it from the house that we have set to actually show you. I'm going to do it from two other houses. I'm trying to put a little bit of flavor to explain better. Now, for me, when I'm explaining to you the closing part, I'm not doing money for this small window on the, on the store, okay? It's wastage of money. Enclose this space, something so small like that, the aeration, the ventilation or aeration to go into this room. Already, in Eva, the one that's coming from the, the door vents, it's enough. You don't need a window, all right? Because nobody's going to live in this room. Nothing much is going to happen in this room. It's so small. So this is wastage of money, okay? What else is wastage of money that I see here? Nothing much. The houses were done perfectly. They were done very well. That's number one. The, dis the plan, the house plan is good, though I feel like the bathrooms are very small. Other than that, everything else is fine. Let's uh, proceed to close the house. Open the house of design. Do you see it? Kakati Wabawa Zimbabwe, if your house is built like this, you need 35 bags of cement to plaster because of that pin, which is a pin, you see that up there. A one and a half bags of cement. Neither it's hard for someone to have built like this if they're building two bedrooms, but hey, I don't know. I don't know how you people are building, but if you build like this, kindly, so you need 35 segment, bags of cement. Madam Aisha is kind to enough to let us use her home to show you this door. Now, there are half doors, and then there is a fully glass door, but it has a burglar inside. Now, if you're going to use this type of door, it shouldn't cost you more than 400,000 shillings. Remember, our house that we are using to document all this, 
its door is a sliding door it's a very big door so I'm also going to give you prices for that one depending on what you want Madam Asha now Madam Asha is going to show you how the door looks in inside see it has burglars inside around there you see it has burglars inside and on the outside it is simply glass all right now i think that's it i'm going to give you the title for that anyway for the total let me give it to you now the total for that is um ha uh, speedy but just speedy i'll give you the totals after i've showed you everything Right, so, as you now understand the material you need to plaster, we are proceeding to the material you need to close. Eh? And then I'll give you a total. But for now, I'll tell you what you need. You need a main door. All right? Our main door, this, these doors are very big. But if you're building in the sense that you're trying to save money, you can often use small doors. This is not a sliding door, it's an opening door, but the same design can be done for you to be sliding, all right? But this is an opening door, all right? Even the burglars open, they don't slide. All right, now, for someone to make for you a door like this, with the burglars inclusive, all right? This is what they will charge you. The door, this door is 8 by 8, by the way. 8 by 8, and it is 1.6, sorry, it is 1.5 millimeters. That is the door frame and the burglars inside this door are 1.2 millimeters. Now, this person will charge you at most 1.6 million Ugandan shillings, at most, okay? But you can, also, you can always negotiate and pay less. Remember, all these things depend on where you go, whom you go to. But remember, these are the standard millimeters. The door frame, 1.5 millimeters, and the burglars inside. Burglars, this is what I mean by burglars. Yeah? Security burglars. See that? It's like two doors in one. Eh? Can close. You see that? Can open. All right, now I've showed you uh, there is a cheaper door. There are doors that are cheaper, where it is going to be a double door, but it doesn't have all this extension this way. You see that? It doesn't have that cutting. The door simply is the door. All right? Which means even the burglars are less inside and the vents are smaller. But this is a big door. The other door is slightly smaller. Now that one will cost you 400 Ugandan shillings. And this, by the way, this is not even 1.5 millimeters. This is probably two, two millimeters or even 2.2, because .2, this is heavy, this is so thick. So this door in particular costs, this one here right now, it costs 1.6 million Ugandan shillings, but then yours could be a little bit cheaper. Now, in the attempt to close this house, now, there is a, a construction flow in this house. You see this area here. You see this. In the attempt to make a hallway, this small hallway, like a corridor, this one, you don't need to put a door frame. You just need an arch. Yeah? Bakulauka arch. Now, like here, for the kitchen side. You see that? No need to put a door. All right? I told you this house is supposed to be renovated in two weeks' time, so don't worry about it. Aha, uh -huh. Okalava. Now, no need to put a door here, wastage of money. So you need a door to your bedroom. This is a bedroom. And this door, the doors that are here, this is Movole. It's a Movole door. But to save money, I will suggest you look for, don't look for mahogany, don't look for Movole, look for the other type of door. Its color is a little bit lighter. A bit away too. Uh, you will check through my construction videos or Jakulava. You will see me explaining these doors. There is a price, there is a time I put current prices of doors, of wooden doors, inside doors. 
So you need two doors, two wooden doors. You need one for your bedroom and one for the toilet. You can't leave your toilet bare or open. All right? Now, for those doors, the hinges cost different. These hinges are eight feet. Now, for a hinge to be eight feet, it will cost you um, for the Musizi. Remember, the other trees, we have Musizi, we have Elgontik, and Mosambia. Those are the standard trees where they make these doors from. All right, those are the wooden doors. So you buy the, the door frames. All right, so for the door frames, the wooden door frames, the Musizi, uh, if the door frame is made from either Musizi, Elgontik, or Musambia, it should cost you at most 230,000 shillings, but you can negotiate down to 200,000 shillings. But for me, I take the maximum money, which is 230,000 shillings, all right? And then you have the door, so you multiply that by two, right? 230,000 shillings by two. And then you need the doors, right? The door for the doors that are going onto these things, onto the, onto the what? Onto the wooden door frames. Eh? Remember, the door frames are eight feet. That's why they have that ventilation space up, eh? eight feet. Now, the doors themselves will cost you about 350,000 shillings. That is, sorry, they'll cost you 280,000 shillings. What am I talking about? Forgive my tongue. The doors that are made from Mosizi or Elgontik or Musambia or Pine, they will cost you 350,000 Ugandan shillings. But remember, you can negotiate down to 300,000 shillings. All right? So, that's the car these are the current prices of those wooden doors. All right? Now, we've sorted the doors. So, we have the windows. You're going to have two windows in this particular case. If you build your house with... These, these windows are very big, so I'm not using these windows to give you calculations of money, but now these are very big. Now, if you're building your house and you're putting a store, like, did you see that house? You're going to see that house, the Miss, Madame Asha's house, the one I showed you. Her, doors are, her windows are really small, so those are the prices I'm giving you for. Those regular windows... Now, those windows are four by three, and they are 1.2 millimeters thick. The material they make them from is 1.2 millimeters, and they are four by three. Now, the prices for four by three windows is 280,000 shillings. So that's the money we are going to use to assort ourselves in the calculations, not these. These windows are big. They are four by what? Four by five, four by three. Okay, so you need two windows. You need one for your bedroom and you need one for your living room. All right? Now, if you're putting a store on your house instead of a kitchen, you're going to need a door. You'll get what we call a half door. For your store, no need to put a window on your store. All right? No need to put a window on your store. You simply have to put a door. And these doors come with their own ventilation. So that's why the windows, the whole point for windows is ventilation. No need to put a window on the store. And if you're doing a kitchen instead of the store, there is also no need to put a door inside your house to your kitchen. No, just put an arch. Mbabalaze, how the arch looks like. Now those half doors, uh, you need one that is three by two. And it, is, it should be one millimeter as thick. It shouldn't cost you more than 350,000 shillings as well. All right? Maximum 350. But I know you can even get one for 150 to 170. But remember, the designs, the type of, the type of metal bleaching, it matters. All right? But I'm trying to get you something more secure. Now, you're going to need nothing else, actually. That's it for closing. As you put the main door, you put the bathroom door, the, the bedroom door, you put your kitchen window. Or if you don't have a, a what? If you don't have a, a kitchen inside, like these people, you put your store. Now, in this case, 
your main door, if you build uh, your living room, because this living room, its window is in the kitchen. So that means they will design your house in the sense that they will put the window next to the door. All right? You've seen the houses. I don't know how to explain these things for you except show you, but you know what I'm talking about. So the window is carried from here, and the store is completely enclosed. This extends a little bit this side so that they leave space for the window. So that your living room has enough lighting coming in. Lighting in the living room is very crucial, it's important. Then the hinge, sorry, the door frames are two. Then the one main door and two windows. There is no need for, hey, there is another car window, the bathroom window, from outside. Now, bathroom windows, just one. You can get the small one. It, you can get one at that two by 2.5 feet at 1.2 millimeters. That one will cost you 150,000 shillings, nothing fancy. But it's also for aeration in your bathroom, all right? Hey, you need to aerate your bathroom as well. Importance, you know that there is no need to explain that any further. Now, we are moving on to the totals, okay? And this is how it looks, huh? like a small window. You see that? It's very small, all right? But it's nice. And then this would be your bedroom window, if I'm not mistaken. All right, now let's do the totals. Now prices for those who are building a house, the total for those who are building a house with a store on the outside, instead of opting to have a kitchen inside, and you're also having this big door. You know, the big door, it can be opening or sliding, the price will still be the same. Your total will be six six million five hundred and ten thousand Ugandan shillings, but, but, but if you decide that you don't want to, like I was saying, if you decide not to have this big door, you see that? You say for me, I don't want that big door. I want a regular small door that's going to cost me 400,000 shillings at most. Your total is, and you're using 32 bags of cement, eh? and you didn't roof your house like uh, with a pin, eh? and you roofed like this. You know, I hipped you off. Your total is going to be 4,960,000 shillings. To do everything, to close your house, to plaster it, this is going to be your total. I know I'm joining these things, but I've already given you the prices before. So what you do, you go down and pick what you need, okay? Because chances are high, someone might want to plaster and they don't have money to close the door immediately. What do you do? You pick what you need, all right? And then if you're going to use this big door, all right, and you don't have, but you, the only thing you don't have is the store, hmm? we exclude you from having this money. But remember, you, you only have the money less by one point, one point what? Anyway, your total will be 6,160,000 Ugandan shillings. If you're using this door, the big door, and you're not having a store on the outside. Space is enclosed like this, your kitchen is inside. This is your total. But if you say you don't want this big door, you want a door like Miss Aisha, Miss Aisha's door, but your kitchen is inside, your measurements are whatever you want them to be, your windows are standard, bulichimu, your total is 4 million, uh, 960,000 shillings. So I would like to assume that that's the total. Okay, for anyone to build these houses. But of course, if you have the money and you want something nicer, this is what you need. Now, the reason we put waterproof, before I close this video, I wanted to show you. The reason we put waterproof in the mix, in the plaster mix before we plaster, to avoid problems like this. This is a problem in construction. It's called damp is rising or damp, rising damp. You've seen this in many houses where it's a new house, but the uh, what? The material is peeling. Eh? You can even scratch further, because this is not my house, I can't scratch further. Here, for example, you can even see eh, that the plaster itself is moving. It won't move off like fall off, but it can easily be eroded. And when it rains, the water can easily 
rise through this watch together so one of the problems one of the reasons that happens is because damp is rising and the person didn't put waterproof in their mix the other thing is using the wrong paint in the wrong place paint you're also the cause of this sometimes you can be wanting to cut corners someone can even put waterproof in a, in a what in a bag of cement and yet they've put like over six wheelbarrows seven wheelbarrows into one bag of cement what do you expect when you're plastering of course you have problems like this there are so many causes of damp but those are some of the main causes of damp rising in your building so please be careful especially when you're doing finishing jobs. Eh? Be very, very careful. All right, thanks for watching Doreen's African Experiences. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a nice week and kindly enjoy yourselves, yeah? See ya.